Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about how hard is it to learn Unreal Engine 5 as a beginner, as someone who's completely new, and what can you expect to be able to make after putting in the time to learn it, um, can you actually make some high quality games, uh, and by games I mean like not, nothing like mobile games or like really simple games where you're like jumping from one platform to another, I'm talking about building ARPGs or RPG games. Um, with you know really cool graphics because unreal engine 5 gives you that out of the box so i want to give you a overview of everything so that when in the future when i'm doing tutorials you have your expectations set and you know what to look for or whether you're looking at other tutorials um i will i want to give you some perspective so the tldr is that the learning curve of getting into game development is pretty high and the main reason for that um, it's not actually programming and it's not even related to Unreal Engine. It's about build, it's about game engines in general. The idea is that you're actually building a whole world whenever you're developing a game and a world consists of a lot of things. And you notice that when you actually get into game development, even when you're looking at the actual real world, a lot of details will come to your attention because there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, right? There's lighting, there's the sky, there is the 3D models of the different objects that you have. There is the textures on each object. Um, there is animations. There is um, the actual logic of the game. There is sound. There is sound effects, visual effects. And all of these kind of come together to build the actual world. And there's also the concept of frames per second that you're showing on the screen. There's a concept of time. Uh, because in games there is usually time, right? Um, and all of these are have their own complexity and kind of wrapping your head around all of these at the same time it can be very overwhelming at the start. And I'm not saying this to scare you, but I'm saying that it's okay and that there is going to be this feeling of um, getting overwhelmed whenever you're actually getting into it because there's a lot of moving pieces. And whenever you're learning this, um, whether you're a developer or whether you're an artist, um, you're, you're going to have to have a general understanding of all the other different pieces that come into play um, because um, you're going to be having to act work with those things, even if it's at a very um, high level. So that's the... I can say that's the most hard part. There has to come a point in your learning a journey where all of these pieces kind of click and it just makes sense um, and that point takes a bit of time uh, I think for me it took around like 50 to 100 hours to, to get to that point where I, I kind of understood all the different moving pieces and it kind of made sense and I'm not claiming um, that I'm an expert at all of them because I'm not um, especially when it comes to the artistic stuff um, so it's somewhere that I'm lacking but I have a good understanding of where those pieces are needed how to do it at a basic level and that's really all you need to actually develop some really cool things um, the second thing that makes Unreal Engine uh, a bit hard to learn and now we're getting into the specifics is that the coding part of it um, so Unreal Engine um, uses C++ and C++ is a bit of a harder language to learn uh, compared to the other ones which are more high level like Python uh, and Java and stuff like that. So um, if you want to get into the coding piece of it, which you would have to when you want to do really complex games, um, and by complex games, I mean games that have systems like, you know, you have abilities, you have multiple abilities with talent systems and stuff like that. Um, th those stuff get complicated because you're having layers over layers. And if you wanted to not do it with code, um, it would be a bit problematic. So you're going to need some time to actually learn C++ and um, how to actually use it in Unreal Engine. Uh, that's a bit of a hard one as well. And the third and last part, which makes Unreal Engine a bit difficult, is just the vastness of the tool. So uh, as we talked at the beginning, there's a lot of moving pieces in Unreal Engine, right? So there's 3D modeling, there's sounds, there's animations, there's the logic for the animations, and I can go on and on and on. And all of these pieces um, has support in Unreal Engine 5, whereas before you had to use a lot of outside tools, um, but now you can do a lot of it inside the tool, unless you want to do like something very, very advanced. But for the most part, you can actually do a lot of it in Unreal Engine. So you can see a lot of different windows, a lot of different 
and then options in the Unreal Engine Editor. And at the beginning, if you just go into it and all of this is thrown at you, it's really overwhelming. Um, and it may make you unmotivated to keep going. Um, but what I'm telling you is it's okay um, at the start to, to feel that, to feel um, that pressure. Uh, it, it gets a lot better as you slowly um, start to learn the tool. And I'm going to give you some um, tips on, on how to do that um, and what helped me get through that phase. So here's the good news um, that I wanted to share with regards to the um, tool. And it's not all doom and gloom um, and that it's really hard and stuff like that. So the cool thing about Unreal Engine 5, and right now we're at Unreal Engine 5.2, is that the Epic Games is really trying to make triple a game development accessible to everyone and that means me and you as like a, a single developer or a single artist um, can actually create some really cool games with high quality graphics and gameplay um, what do i mean by that so for example for me as a developer developing environments and creating 3d models and stuff like that um, that's you know it's not something i can do i would have to put in a lot of time um, to do it. So, you know, it's, it was one of the parts which kind of kept me away from learning tools like this. But in Unreal Engine 5.2, for example, they have added this procedural um, generation tool, which you can actually generate environments um, without actually needing to place each one individually uh, and spending all that time designing something. And you can randomly generate like all these different objects. Uh, and all I did to create this environment that you see here with the flowers and the bushes all randomly placed like this was to create a graph just like that. And it generated um, this here. And you can see that if I change the size of this, if I make it smaller, it kind of changes the distribution and randomly generates it again. And so it makes it really easy to create worlds now um, by, I can, and you can imagine I can add a bunch of trees and a bunch of, um, dirt rocks and stuff like that and randomly generate like a whole starting area of for an rpg game or a movie or whatever that you want um, and all the 3d models that i'm using here are also free and are provided by um, unreal engine in the quixel bridge um, add-on and the cool thing is in the in the near future unreal engine is going to add more even even more free uh, models and assets um, and it's going to be much easier to actually build worlds and stuff like that so that's from a perspective of a developer uh, wanting to do art things and it's the same thing if you're an artist if you are an animator if you are any of um from that side of things and coding is a bit scary for you um unreal engine has provided the blueprint system which you can see here which you can use to um, pretty much uh, build game logic uh, without actually writing to without writing C++ code. So this is a way that it makes it as, uh, accessible for artists to actually code, code stuff. And it's not just simple things. So let me just show you an example here. So over here, um, this is a small project I was working on. I wanted to imitate quests, like gathering quests um, in, in MMORPGs. You can consider any game that you like. World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy, Guild Wars, um, The World is Your Limit. I wanted to imitate how it is to make a quest NPC, go grab a quest, gather the objects and come back, right? Um, and I did all of this in this project without you writing a single line of C++ code, it's all with blueprints. So if I click play, you'll see that um, there's an NPC with an icon on top of the head. Now the icon, again, it's just a free asset that I found. You can you know make it an exclamation mark or whatever it is that you like. So if I move up to the NPC and if I right click on him, you'll see the quest box showing up and I can accept the quest where it says collect five boxes. Now when I go to these boxes, if I right click them, it'll collect them and you'll see the number of boxes I have on the top left and the box would disappear. So I'm gonna right click it's gonna say I have one box. Um, if I wanted to work on this more, I would add an animation for it to like crouch whenever it's collecting the boxes and pr probably show a progress bar, but that's not what my intention was when doing this project. So I can see, I can go ahead and collect all these boxes right here. One of them is on the top. I can right click, now I have three. I can right click here, now I have four. Now keep in mind the indicator is still orange, which means our quest is still in progress. And when I right click here, I have five boxes. Now, if I turn around, I can see that the NPC is green. Now I can right click and I can hit complete and the indicator disappears. 
And just like that, uh, I've built a gathering quest. And once you build one gathering quest, uh, guess what? You can do a hundred different gathering quests. You just change the quest dialog and the objects that you need to collect. Um, and if you've played RPG games, you know that there's only really three types of quests, right? Gathering, kill X number of things, and talk to X and talk to Y. So you can build... I'm telling you this so you know that once you learn the basics, you can actually create the core of a lot of games by implementing a single feature and, and expanding on it. I want to show you another basic project as well that I did with C++. Right, so as you may know, um, Diablo 4 is coming pretty soon in one week from when I'm recording this video. And that's an ARPG game, right? You have a character and you can click to move. I wanted to create the basic combat that's in um, Diablo 4, the basic logic. I wanted to create one ability and a character that moves by clicking. And as you can see, it's right here. I didn't work anything on like art start, the art style or anything like that. I didn't want to make a complete game. I just wanted to see if I can <clears throat> uh, make one character that can do one ability. Then I knew that I can actually just make more abilities and add to it and even add talents if I wanted to. So as you can see, I can move around and I can go here. There's a sword here. I can press um, F to grab the sword. And now that my character has the sword and it's in combat stance. And now when I press Q, you'll see it um, doing an animation, doing the actual move as well. So if I just add the ability here on a UI bar, it's pretty similar to a uh, character in Diablo and I need to flesh out the animations, but I think this looks pretty good. Like it's crossing the sword, spinning in a circle and cleaving uh, everything around it. And I, I even made an NPC here that when it sees you, it starts following you around and you can see its HP bar on top of its head and I can attack it as well when it comes forward and it loses HP. And it can attack me as well, and I lose my health here as well. So I'm showing you this to give you some motivation that it's actually possible to build some really cool games. And um, it doesn't need to be a full-fledged, um, like, expansive game that you need to do release. You can actually release a small ARPG or a small RPG game, like just the starting area, and then share it with your friends, and they can play it and have a good time. Um... And you can start from there and get some experience. And then from there, you can decide what you want to do um, after. Um, but you're not limited to games either. You can create movies, animations. You can create virtual reality experiences, uh, mixed reality experiences as well. And <clears throat> there's a satisfaction that comes with this creative work because everything that you code and you design, um, you get to actually see it in action. Um, and that is pretty fun compared to other um, types of programming where you program some stuff and it's just like some text or API you see on the screen. Um, so it can be a bit in more enjoyable if you are a visual kind of person. Um, so with that, uh, I want to give one last tip for learning all of this, you know, difficult content. And that's for you to build a game that you enjoy in Unreal Engine. That's how you should learn it, the tool. Um, so I would stay away from tutorials that um, kind of give an overview of every different feature in the engine, especially when you're starting out because it's going to be too overwhelming and you don't need to know um, everything all at once. You really want to know only the things that you need to use at the time and slowly you're going to build the muscle memory of these different stuff in the editor so for example if you enjoy arpgs see if you can find a tutorial of someone building an arpg uh, but my word of warning is whatever tutorial that you find uh, make sure that whoever is teaching it explains why they're doing what they're doing um, so you understand the tool um, if it's a um, if it's something that, you know, they've discovered by testing uh, and they found that it works, um, that's good for them. But it's, it's, it's a bit hard to learn uh, from that perspective. So whatever tutorial you find, um, make sure that the instructor explains why they're doing what they're doing so you get an understanding. Um, as for me, I'm going to try to do some tutorials on stuff that I'm showing you here. So maybe do a small ARPG, a small MOBA, a small RPG game, and then do a beginner's guide on how you can actually do it yourself. And I'm uh, going to continue with uh, some other tutorials as well, um, some shorter ones. So if you'd like, stick around and thanks for watching.